Selamat pagi. Now, um, I won't go further into the processes, the fractionation and so on, because uh, basically you can find plenty of information about that. Uh, the principles are always the same, you know, based on crystallization. Uh, so um, I think you can explore on your own, and if you don't understand, uh, of course, you can always come to me. So in the last few lectures that we still have, let's look at our own palm oil. So we use our, and maybe I want to find also time next week, just go back to starch, because I have not actually covered I, I, one lecture on sagu. I have to talk about sagu. My love on sagu. I must share my love for sagu with you. Yeah? I have one good presentation which I presented in the International Hydrochloric Conference in Singapore uh, many years ago. Um, as a keynote speaker, I thought that presentation maybe not many people you know, will, be, uh, will be interested but to my surprise it was very well attended by international participants all these Mat Saleh, Mat Saleh also it turned out that they are very interested to learn more about Sagu yeah? so, and they were so happy because in that presentation uh, I have a lot of pictures, I show a lot of pictures what Sagu is uh, most of them or maybe all of them have not seen Sagu the sago tree, the sago palm. So when they learn more about the properties of sago, then you know, um, so sago now is coming up as one of the commercial starch around the world. So hopefully I can find maybe one slot next year, uh, ne sorry, next, year, next week, <laughs> next week to, sh to share with you. But for now, um, our, because this course is about technology primary, product prime, primer, no? so product primer yang kita focus in this course is actually palm oil, our oil palm and actually sago, but sago I skip, so I must go back and at least have one hour. So this is the beautiful oil palm fruits. It's not indigenous, it's not indigenous to Malaysia. Yeah, meaning that historically it was brought from yeah, West Africa brought by the colonial to Malaysia. But because we uh, have, you know, uh, very similar, like uh, uh, tropical, uh, what, what's uh, Climate. Climate, uh, okay. Tropical climate, the oil palm grow very, you know, uh, uh, and thrive, we call it thrive, yeah, in Malaysia. And because we do uh, a lot, of, uh, we develop the technology, we de develop the technology and the know how, the knowledge how to grow uh, the palm oil, the oil palm. And uh, so we, we have a plantation, systematic plantation. Then after that, we develop technology to process the fruits, the oil palm fruits into oil. The technology of course was borrowed from uh, other uh, 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 processing of oil from corn oil and you know, uh, but it, it has to be modified because the uh, corn uh, seed oil, the, 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 the way they process is very different, slightly different. So uh, Malaysia has to develop the technology until we become, you know, uh, the biggest producer of palm oil. But <coughs> starting from I think nine, uh, late 1980s, Indonesia, we we uh, we help the Indonesia to develop their technology, and now they have overtaken us as the biggest producer of palm oil in the world. Yeah. In terms of world production, uh, in terms of world production, palm oil is only second to corn, yeah, to corn oil. And for those um, 
I can imagine uh, any, I mean, in, the, in this class, I just ask this question, uh, doesn't mean anything. Who have not seen the actual oil palm fruits? Not seen the actual oil palm fruit? Don't be shy. Yeah, okay. Okay. But of course, the, 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 the tree, of course, yeah, because even along the highway. Now, if you fly from Penang to KL before, you know, when you're about to land, if you sit near the window, you can see, wow, how beautiful is the green uh, oil palm plantation, yeah. But those who have not seen, maybe you want to venture into uh, the plantation and really feel how to be in the middle of oil palm uh, uh, plantation, yeah. But be careful. Because in the oil palm plantation, you have snakes. You have snakes. I want to share one interesting story. Uh, because I live near the plantation. Yeah? So during my school days, so during the weekend, you know, I <coughs> always, uh, with, my friend, with my friends, we go into the, plant, uh, to the estate to play football. Yeah? Naik basikal lah, naik basikal. So one day after we play football, naik basikal balik, suddenly a big long cobra snake fell from the tree, from, fell from the oil palm tree, a few meters from me. And the snake was just kind of, mungkin dia jatuh di snap perut ke kan? Sakit perut. So they just stare at me, then I was just also speechless and stare at the snake, you know, don't know what to do. And then after that, slowly just went into the, apa, into the <laughs> smart. Then I continue. Just after a few meters, just imagine another snake fell from the, <laughs> just a few meters in front of me. Just imagine if the snake fell on my, on me. Yeah. So snakes, uh, you can see snakes easily on the uh, palm oil plantation because snake is used as a biological control. They catch and eat the. Rats, yeah. One of the one of the unique characteristic of the oil palm, you know, you can see here. There's a, lo a lot of uh, sharp tone, and this sharp tone, if it happens to you know, uh, you can get injured. You can easily get injured with if you touch this uh, or accidentally touch the sharp tone. But once it get in, you know, poke into your you know uh, hand, it's so bitter, you know. You know, bisa, bisa tau, bisa. Sakit yang yang amat sangat. <laughs> yeah, somehow. I just just want to share my 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 own experience, helping helping you know uh, in the to get extra money. <laughs> yeah, helping in the plantation, uh, angkut buah and and so on lah. You see me, uh, I'm I'm thin, right? <laughs> But. They are doing my school days very strong. All right. Um, so this is how it looks like. This while it's still young, so it, you can harvest the fruit quite easily. But those who work in the palm oil in the oil palm plantation, yang kait buah ni, they are very strong. I used to shake hand with these people, with my friend, <laughs> working in the plantation, and when I touch his hand. It's like touching something like, wow, so thick and hot. <laughs> this fruit is very beautiful. So this is called oil palm fruit bunch. Oil palm fruit bunch. So be before you can get into the oil inside the fruits, first you have to strip off, strip off the fruits. So in the processing, we use a, so a machine called stripper to strip off the fruits so that this will go into the machine. So usually uh, in the oil mill, the fruits has to go uh, through a process called st sterilization. But this, this kind of, the term sterilization is actually not very accurate because it's not really meant to sterilize the fruit to achieve commercial sterility <laughs> like in canning right you have learned right commercial sterility but it's only mainly meant to uh, of course to uh, to 
destroy some micro microorganisms, but mainly to sort of loosen, longarkan the fruits from the bunch so that it can be stripped off easily. And also to, yeah, to deactivate uh, some uh, un undesirable enzymes. Um, the fruits, while still on the fruit, on the, on the tree, or you know, while it's still intact, no damage, the oil in the fruit would be stable. But once the fruit is damaged, especially during, you know, uh, during the harvesting and during the transportation, once the fruit is, is damaged, like this one, you cut off the fruits, so the enzyme will be released. So the enzyme like lipo, lipase would, would act on the triglycerides and hydrolyze the, the triglyceride to, to form free, free fatty acid, FFA. The more we allow the enzyme to act on the oil before extraction, the more free fatty acid will be produced. And therefore, during the later stage of refining, a process called deodorization. I don't have time really to go into that. But deodorization is actually a, a, a steam, uh, pro, a steam uh, distillation process to remove the free fatty acid as much as possible. So the more free fatty acid we have in the oil, the more we need to remove later. So that will increase the cost of the processing. So we want to prevent as much as we can damage of the fruit from the plantation to the factory. And as soon as it gets into the factory, we want to start the extraction process as soon as possible. So when um, one of the important parameters in, in the oil pump, um, especially when we extract the oil, the crude oil, we have to measure the amount of moisture, the water content in the oil. Because moisture, high amount of moisture or water also is not uh, good because it will promote the hydrolysis of the triglycerides to produce more fatty acid. Yeah? So two parts of the fruits. This is the outer part, the flesh, which con contain the palm oil. And in the middle, we have the kernel. So it's called palm kernel. So there's a shell, just like a coconut shell. And this white one, this is the inside the kernel. The, uh, the, uh, so this is the, the palm kernel, this is the palm oil. So we can, we can extract from here, we can get the palm, crude palm oil. And from the white flesh, uh, in the kernel, we can get the palm kernel oil. So there are two types of oil. One is called palm oil from the outer part of the flesh. And the white part is the palm kernel oil, which have quite similar properties to the coconut oil. Yeah. So this is how it looks like. Um, this is the kernel. So from the flesh, we can get the crude palm oil. So the crude palm oil usually are uh, very, very thick, dark orange in color. Contain actually a uh, high amount of uh, carotenoids and uh, pigments, other pigments. Contain a uh, a lot of gums or uh, in the form of uh, phosphatides. So this has to, be, has to be removed. And also contains some trace metals, heavy metals, and uh, you know, co uh, metals like copper, iron. These are pro-oxidant. Yeah? Copper, iron. So these are pro-oxidant, meaning that it can promote, it can accelerate oxidation of the fat. When the fat is oxidized, then it will become rancid. So we, we don't want the crude oil to become rancid before you refine it because it will, again, it will increase the cost of 
refining. So obviously, the crude oil has to go through. Uh, the next step would be the uh, refining. So the extraction to get the crude palm oil and also to get the crude palm kernel oil. So this is the kernel. Uh, last time, uh, after the extraction of the palm kernel oil, what happened to the kernel? The shell. The shell they can use for uh, you know uh, as a to in the in the boiler as a heat uh, to generate heat for the processing. <coughs> in the in a palm oil factory, in the oil palm factory, there's always a boiler. Yeah, in the refin refineries. The boiler will supply the steam. The steam is used in the heat exchanger to supply heat. Okay? So, uh, but the, the kernel is also used in the estate, in the palm oil estate, in the oil palm estate. Uh, they use it uh, to uh, cover the road surface. You know, in the estate last time, uh, um, I don't know, uh, I'm, I'm referring to the estate that I'm, I'm, I was used to. Yeah? Uh, you know, you didn't have a proper road, Jalan Tanah Merah, you know, and imagine during heavy rain, yeah, so all the jalan would be very becha. So what they do, they put this kernel on the road sort of to cover, you know, so that it become, uh, although it's becha, but you can still walk on the road sort of, you know, and it's very thick. Um, okay. And this uh, crude palm oil. So you can see a lot of uh, solid sediments, solid uh, material there. And this has to be removed during the refining so that we can get a clear oil free of suspended solids. This is a crude palm kernel oil, this crude palm oil. The palm, oops, uh, the palm, crude palm oil, in the industry, they use the short form, CPO. You know, uh, so when they say CPO, it stands for crude palm oil. Palm kernel oil, PKO, palm kernel oil. So we have to get, if you work in the industry, then you should know what's the, uh, the short form means or refer to. And... Palm oil now is being used in many countries around the world. Manufacturers. Nestle used to be the biggest user. Now I think still the biggest, although they now have some, uh, uh, they have reduced the use of palm oil in some products because of the pressure from the, from the consumer group. Yeah? But I think still, uh, one of the big users, if not the biggest. And you can you imagine that they are, our palm oil is everywhere. <laughs> yeah? To replace the cocoa butter, cocoa, because cocoa butter is expensive, so we can replace, we can use a hydrogenated fat as a cocoa butter substitute or cocoa butter equivalent. We can, um, you know, uh, co condensed milk, a lot of condensed milk like Carnation and other brands use hydrogenated palm oil. Uh, dairy creamer, non-dairy creamer, sorry, non-dairy creamer. And things, plastic fat like margarine. Yeah. So these are, and now we have carotinol. Yeah. It used to be, you know, uh, Many years ago, we just produced this type of oil. But reali realizing, the uh, realizing the, that the oil, the crude palm oil, contained a rich amount of carotenoid and tocopherol, which is a source of vitamin A and vitamin E. So they said, hey, why do we have to remove all this? We can uh, you know, uh, retain this in the oil and this actually uh, this oil now be, should be more nutritious so that's why when you buy keratino oil you, we can imagine uh, logically they in this case they use less refining right this one more refining to get to that 
you know, extend this more refined oil, this less refined oil. This one should be cheaper, right? But why it is more expensive? Because they say huh? more nutritious, more value. Yeah. But this is why the Americans are so envious of our palm oil. Because to add, let's say, uh, to increase the carotenoid content of maybe some products, they have, you know, they have to use other source to, to increase the carotenoid content. But if they use our palm oil, it's already there naturally. Is it? So I think uh, God has given us, the country, bless us with this oil palm. Yeah? And one of the biggest crops that generate revenue or income for our country. Even non-food products based on palm oil. Yeah. So the byproduct of the byproduct of palm oil refining is fatty acid. So what do we do with fatty acid? We don't just throw it away. We can use this fatty acid to produce so-called oleochemicals. We can use the fatty acid to produce soap like this. To produce soap, not soup, soap. Yeah. We can use the palm oil to, you know, this uh, natural uh, carotenoid in the capsule. So, um, and many other things here. Yeah? And we can the, uh, use palm oil to produce, uh, you know, cosmetic, produce emulsifiers. Denisco, you can see Denisco, uh, if you go Sebrang, before Sebrang Jaya on the left, towards Arusta, on the left you can see Denisco, right? Uh, next time when you uh, 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 drive along that, uh, just when you go out from Jambatan, you see on the left, going towards Alusta, Denisco on the left. Denisco is actually a Denmark uh, company. Eh? So they use our palm oil to produce emulsifiers. Emulsifiers. For those, uh, I'm sure you have seen this oil palm plantation. A very familiar site, yeah? Very familiar site. But do you know why Malaysia now is becoming the second producer, not the largest producer now? We are, well, in terms of land area, we are smaller, of course. Yes, true. But adding to that, uh, I don't know about other states, but in Selangor, my, from my place, Kelang, you know, I can see more and more plantation now have been converted into housing area, residence for residents, yeah. Because maybe they can make more money from selling the houses. So I don't know what other states, you know, and it's uh, quite sad to see because the grains has turned into just houses and that, that add to the traffic jam. Because more houses, more people living in that area and the road is still the same road. <laughs> Doesn't become bigger. You see, this, now, this tree now is <laughs> very tall and you need to use this pole to harvest the fruits. I can't do this. I've tried. <laughs> Not strong enough. Yeah? <laughs> and you know that there are many stories. When you kite this buah, sometimes you can kite the snake as well. <laughs> the snake can sleep there, you know, sometimes. So sometimes you say, oh, this is a snake. Uh, already split into two. <laughs> Because, you know, the pisau that we use is so tajam, you know. Ah, jangan main, main. Eh? Then uh, we can pick up the fruits. So this is a modern way of pick up the fruits. You know, uh, I used to work uh, to apa ni, collect the fruits. So I have to apa ni, cucuk the fruits and put into the apa ni, kereta sorong. Oh, it's so heavy. One of, especially if uh, a good, uh, well-maintained, Plantation, the fruits are all 
very big and healthy. Then we have to transport it. Uh, this is also a typical site, especially if we live near the plantation. You know, I used to you know ride a bicycle to the school and this lorry pass at, you know on on the road on my side. So oh, you know, okay, so takut eh? And this tractor carrying the fruits, uh, this is actually a weigh bridge. When when the tractor pass through this, it will weigh. The fruits plus the tractor. When the, tra when the tractor go out again, empty tractor minus. So they minus the weight. <laughs> That's how they weigh. Otherwise, can you imagine how they weigh the fruits? And um, the factory will pay based on the weight of the fresh fruits. Yeah, Based on the weight of fresh fruits. But before they pay to the plantation, they will analyze the content of the of the fruits, the moisture content, and sometimes the moisture is higher than usual, so they will make like some adjustment in terms of how much they have to pay, uh, because they can estimate the oil content of the fruits. Okay. Transport to the factory. Uh, this is a palm oil mill. Doesn't look very, uh, you know, modern kind of factory. So you can see the fruit is is, uh, is being uh, just. Lamba outside the factory sometimes, and this uh, if the if the fruits are transported in the you know in the like trains, and this will go into the sterilizer directly, like this. So this long sterilizer, we can put maybe about ten twenty people inside to be sterilized. <laughs> so the rail come from this direction. It'll go into yeah like this. And go into that sterilizer. And this extraction process using the screw press. So now we can look at the whole picture. Um, so this is uh, on the online lecture also, yeah. So we transport the FFB, which is the fresh fruit, fresh fruit, fresh fruit bunch enters the plant for processing. So the first part always extraction. So we start in the oil mill milling. Sterilization uh, just now in the auto in the uh, autoclave in the sterilizer they call it a sterilizer. Stripping to remove to try can the fruits from the bunch. Then extraction to extract the oil. Then after that, they put in the tank, big tank, to allow the solid, suspended, uh, solid, suspended solid material to uh, uh, to, to to precipitate to form a sediment. Then we have the oil. So it can this can be separated so that we have a clear oil, but still. This is called crude palm oil at this stage. So some, sometimes the, the oil mill just do the extraction to produce the CPO. That's it. Then it will go into another factory, which is the, refi, the, the refinery, the oil refinery, uh, the oil refinery, to refine to process the CPO into the refined oil. The final product is called RBD PO, RBD palm oil. Refined B, bleach, D, deodorize. P, palm o oil, RBD PO. Refined bleach, palm oil. So the refining process Although we didn't go through very detail, it can be done by using chemical, yeah, like uh, sodium hydroxide. So this is called chemical refining. So basically, the 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 alkali would react with the free. Uh, have this word, can this word free because it will react with the free fatty acid. 
yeah, we react the free fatty acid form, and this is a process called saponification. Uh, form a soup stock, then you can remove that. Yeah. Um, but if you don't use alkali, if you don't use chemical, then we can use hot steam. Because free fatty acids are volatile. So you can use a steam to remove the free fatty acid, then after that we can condense it and we collect it as FFA distillate, free fatty acid distillate. So these are the various uh, steps after uh, in the in the whether it's physical or chemical we have some degumming degumming meaning we want to remove the you know the the crude palm oil is viscous because of the gums the phosphatides so we want to remove this as much as possible so we use phosphoric acid pre bleaching bleaching is uh, we use uh, activated carbon or bleaching sometimes we call it uh, we use a bleaching earth so bleaching earth actually is a small particle, porous particle, which can absorb the pigments, the, you know, the coloring matters, uh, absorb the trace metals, iron, copper, and so on, which, uh, which are the pro-oxidant. So they will absorb that during the bleaching process. And after the bleaching, the color would be, uh, become, uh, you know, uh, um, become what more lighter and lighter. So in the palm oil uh, refinery, uh, you, if you see in the palm oil refinery, uh, in the pipeline, at certain point you can see it uh, uh, like uh, uh, a glass where you can see the oil flow through that. So you can see the oil change from dark orange slowly to. Uh, dark brown, then after that, uh, orange, uh, red, then uh, le uh, light red, and finally to yellow. Yeah? You can see the stages. Yeah? Then alkali refining. So we have this is a physical refining, this uh, alkali refining. But in the end, there's a deodorization to remove the FFA down to very low level, less than 0.1%. So we have RBD palm oil. And now this oil is ready for further modification. So from here, we can do hydrogenation, uh, uh, interesterification, fractionation. Yeah? But when we do hydrogenation, uh, sometimes after hydrogenation, we have to do the deodorization again. Yeah, so this this step can be uh, repeated. But this is the final product from the palm oil refinery before it goes to the further processing, further modification like interestification, hydrogenation, fractionation. Okay. Uh, this is just another flow chart. Same story, same step. But in this case, it shows the where what happened to the palm kernel. What happened to the palm kernel? So, this part, this part is the palm oil, crude palm oil, but this part is the kernel. Yeah, for the uh, this is more elaborate figures. This diagram was stolen <laughs> by my spy <laughs> from the factory. <laughs> no, one of the students they went to the industrial training, and I think he he got the permission to to take this diagram. Yeah? So when he presented in the seminar, so I thought, wow, this is a nice diagram. So I just take the diagram from, from the student to share with you. But the same thing also, actually. You can see here, the fruits go into the sterilizer. Yeah? 
then we strip the fruits strip the fruit this is stripping here okay then it goes to the what is this extraction by using screw press we get the oil then the oil goes through several stages of process until we get the palm oil ding 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 and we get the palm oil and this one uh, the kernel goes goes into the process to produce the palm kernel oil okay more or less the same uh, any any oil any plant oil any vegetable oil palm oil corn oil canola oil olive oil they all contain triglycerides okay uh, do you have any test after this you have oh okay one one more minute <laughs> okay so remember uh, in the triglycerides we have uh, sorry in the oil we have triglycerides hundreds of triglycerides each have their own melting point so when we cool the oil we cool down the oil bring down the temperature below the melting point of tri <coughs> of the triglycerides it will crystallize so you can imagine we have one fraction with different maybe you know uh, 10 triglycerides there different melting point then we have another fraction so each fraction will have different properties different iodine value different degree of saturation ratio of saturation and unsaturation so we have, we can end up with many fractions so from the palm oil the iodine value is 51 to 53 that shows that IV, iodine value is actually a measure of degree of unsaturation, the double bond. So this shows very roughly that palm oil contains around 50-50 saturated and unsaturated. Okay. Then we separate into two fraction, liquid fraction called olein, hard fraction, solid fraction called hard stearine or stearine, and you can see. Hard stearine and olein have a very significantly different IV. Hard stearine lower IV con compared to olein because hard stearine contain more saturated fatty acid. So less iodine value is lower. Olein contain more high, uh, sorry, contain more contain more unsaturated fatty acid. So iodine value higher. And olein can be further fractionated to super olein, soft, PMF. What is PMF? Uh, palm middle fraction. Li Hun has studied palm middle fraction. And sterine also can be further fractionated. So you can see the differences. Or the main difference here is the IV, the iodine value. And therefore, they have different stability, they have different range, uh, they have different melting point, they have different degree of solid fat, so they can find different application for, uh, they can uh, find application in different, uh, you know, different types of products. Okay, so we stop here, and uh, please check the Nmodo for further information and instruction about the test and other things related to the course. Yeah? Have a nice weekend. See you all next week.